In this segment, we're going to take a look at what happened in the years immediately after the Civil War as we evaluate the effect of the Civil War and Reconstruction politically, economically, and socially. We'll begin with the Southern resentment that was felt. It was Confederate Robert E. Lee who urged the South to accept defeat and reunite as one nation after the war had ended at Appomattox. However, war and reconstruction resulted in Southern resentment toward the North, as well as the freed slaves, which ultimately led to political, economic, and social control of the South by whites to the detriment of the progress that was nearly made. As we take a look at the impact of President Lincoln and his beliefs, Lincoln's view that the United States was one nation indivisible had prevailed. Lincoln believed that since secession was illegal, the Confederate governments only needed to come back to the Union. They were illegitimate and they never really left. And so it was up to Abraham Lincoln as the president to allow them to come back into the Union once their debts had been forgiven. Lincoln believed that Reconstruction was simply a matter of quickly restoring the state governments that were loyal to the United States. Lincoln also believed that once the war was over, to reunify the nation, the federal government should not punish the South, but act with malice toward none and charity for all to bind up the nation's wounds, allow the country to come back together and heal so progress can be made. But Abraham Lincoln's effort fell short, not by his own fault, but by that of others. The assassination of Abraham Lincoln just a few days after Lee's surrender at Appomattox enabled the radical Republicans to influence the process of Reconstruction in a manner that was much more punitive towards the Confederate states. The radicals in Congress were not about to be as forgiving as Abraham Lincoln. Under radical Reconstruction, the radicals believed that the states that seceded were not going to be allowed quickly into the Union, but were going to be placed under military occupation. They were conquered territories, according to Congress, and they believed that as conquered territories, the Constitution gave the power to govern them specifically to Congress. And the radical Republicans in Congress wanted the South to pay for their transgressions. The radical Republicans also believed in aggressively guaranteeing voting and other rights to African Americans. They clashed repeatedly with President Andrew Johnson over the issue of civil rights, over the issue of the uh, freed slaves, over the issue of the Freedmen's Bureau, and eventually they impeached him. They drew up charges and filed them against the president and held him accountable. They failed to remove him, though, from office in the trial that was held in the Senate. But from the Civil War, we get three what we call Civil War Amendments. The 13th Amendment, slavery was abolished permanently in the United States. I know many Americans believe that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves with the Emancipation Proclamation. No, he didn't. He freed only slaves that were outside of his area of control. It was the 13th Amendment that ended slavery in the United States. The 14th Amendment prohibited states from denying equal rights under the law to any American, including the freed slaves. The 14th Amendment also defined what a citizen was, which guaranteed the rights of citizenship to those former slaves. The 15th Amendment was supposed to guarantee voting rights to former slaves. That is, guaranteed regardless of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Now, we all know that in the very near future, the few years after the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments were added to the Constitution, southern state governments are going to find loopholes and ways around these three amendments. 
But Reconstruction came to an end. That period was followed by an extremely close election in 1876. Most Northerners had grown tired of the fight, had grown tired of the debate, and they were ready to move on and look back towards economics, which were not going so good. And after this very, very close election, where it seemed there was, again, no winner going to come out of the Electoral College, this extremely close election came down to electoral votes and disputed votes. In return for support in the Electoral College, the northern states, the radical Republicans, agreed to end military occupation of the South. And that's what ended Reconstruction and the Reconstruction efforts. This came to be known as the Compromise of 1877. In this, Rutherford B. Hayes is going to become the president in exchange for the end of radical Republican and military rule in the South. This is going to ultimately result in what we call home rule. That is a reclaiming of power in the Southern governments by the Democratic Party. That power is going to stay in the Democratic Party's hands for the next 100 years, earning the name the Solid South, as only the Democratic Party seems to have been elected. When we take a look at the impact on the economies, it was very different between the North and the South. The war resulted in economic prosperity for the North. It also resulted in vast westward expansion as people moved west looking to better their lives. Federal subsidies were given to railroads, and that encouraged the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad soon after the war ended. And this is going to intensify movement from the east to the west as settlers are going to flock across the Mississippi River towards the Pacific Ocean, getting cheap land and able to settle it for economic prosperity. The North and the Midwest is going to emerge as a strong, growing industrial economy, laying the foundations for sweeping industrialization of the entire nation. And that's going to set the tone for the next 50 years. Of course, the South is going to be left out of that progress. The United States is going to emerge as a global economic power by the beginning of the 20th century. The impact on the Northern economy was actually beneficial. The South seems to be just the opposite. The South suffered economic distress. Southern states were left embittered and devastated by the war. Farms, railroads, and factories throughout the South were destroyed. And of course, the entire economic system of slave labor plantations was destroyed. The complete and total economy was turned upside down, and they are going to be left with nothing but the ability to hopefully rebuild. When we also consider the impact in, in the South, they would remain backward for the next hundred years or so, many decades to come, as plantations were replaced by tenant farming and sharecropping, a poor substitute for, for the plantation owners, but also a devastating cycle of poverty is going to spring up as sharecroppers and tenant farmers cannot escape the economic shackles, no longer slaves, but still shackled by the economy. And cities like Richmond and Atlanta were completely left in ruins. There was not enough left the entire political system had, uh, and economic system had to be rebuilt. As we take a look at the political, social effects on the South, the doctrine of states' rights was weakened by the emergence of a strong national government. Abraham Lincoln's view of an indivisible nation was realized, and the defenders of states' rights are going to find a home in the Democratic Party. Again, as home rule is restored, the Democratic Party is going to dominate Southern politics for the next century, creating what we could consider the Solid South. 
we also need to consider what happened to slavery. As the Compromise of 1877 enabled the former Confederates to regain power in the South, what we call redemption in the Southern states, turned against any progress that had been made by the former slaves. This opens the door to what we call the Jim Crow era, that long period of time in American history in which African Americans were denied full rights of American citizenship in spite of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. Economic and political gains of the former slaves were only temporary. They did not achieve full equality. While many participated in the governments during the Reconstruction years, after Reconstruction ended in 1877, that was stripped away. What few economic gains were, were made, that was also taken away. And the political gains, that is, the right to vote, was also taken away. The what came to be called the black codes replaced the former slave codes and they tried to maintain that separation in society. So gains were only temporary. It's going to take another 50 to 100 years to work towards getting that part right.